Okay, thank you to Catherine and for inviting my live literature company back to Lauderdale House with this performance of what is probably Shakespeare's most joyful play. I think we can think of joy all the way through this beautiful play of Shakespeare's. And you'll see in the program that I've put down all sorts of different aspects of love which follow the sequence of this play of Shakespeare's. So love is really what Shakespeare is all about in this play. And we have just come back from touring to Devon. And one of our troops has gone back to the United States. So I'm sure you will appreciate the circumstances, those of you who are grandparents, because this student had a grandparent who died. So they've flown back, and that part of Phoebe has been taken over by Megan O'Connor, who will play that part on the book this evening. So that has happened, and we have a group here of Niagara University drama students who are performing for you this evening. And this is a very important part of Live Literature Company's educational remit. So it is just wonderful that after four years, as Catherine said, it's four years, we can start again with this. So thank you for joining us. And I hope you enjoy the performance. And if you do enjoy the performance, there's a collection at the end, which is for Lauderdale. Thank you. The courtesy of nations allows you my better, in that you are the firstborn. But the same tradition takes not away my blood. Were there twenty brothers betwixt us, I have as much of my father in me as you. Albeit I confess your coming before me is near to his reverence. What, boy? Oh, come, come, elder brother. You are too young in this. Wilt thou lay hands on me, villain? I am no villain. I am the youngest son of Sir Roland de Bois. He was my father. And he was thrice a villain that says such a father begot villain. Is it even so? Begin you to grow upon me? I will physic your rankness and yet give no thousand crowns up neither. Paula Dennis! Calls your worship? Was not Charles the Duke's wrestler here to speak with me? So please you, he is here at the door and importunes access to you. Call him in. What, do you wrestle before the new duke tomorrow? Mary do I, sir, and I came to acquaint you with a matter. I am given, sir, secretly to understand that your younger brother Orlando hath the disposition to come disguised against me to try a fall. If he come tomorrow, I'll give him his payment. If ever he go alone again, I'll never wrestle for prize more. And so God keep your worship. Farewell, good Charles. Charles the wrestler. No fair, princess. He is the general challenger. 
I come but in as others do to try within the strength of my youth. The little strength I have, I would it were with you. And mine to eke out hers. Very well. Pray haven't I be deceived in you. Your heart's desire to be with you. Come! Where is this young gallant that is so desirous to lie upon his mother earth? Ready, sir. But his will hath in it a more modest working. Can I not say I thank you? My better parts are all thrown down, and that which here stands up is but a quintain, a mere lifeless slot. He calls us back. My pride fell with my fortunes. I'll ask him what he would. Did you call, sir? Sir, you have wrestled well and overthrown more than your enemies. Will you go, cuz? Have with you. Fare you well. What passion hangs these weights upon my tongue? I cannot speak to her, yet she urged conference. O oh, poor Orlando, thou art overthrown. Thus must I from the smoke into the smother, from tyrant duke unto a tyrant brother. But heavenly Rosalind, In words, they are as innocent as grace itself. But your mistrust. Let it suffice thee that I trust thee not. But your mistrust cannot make me a traitor. Tell me whereon the likelihood depends. Thou art thy father's daughter. There's enough. So was I when your highness took his dukedom. So was I when your highness banished him. Treason is not inherited, my lord. Oh, if we did derive it from our friends, what's that to me? My father was no traitor. Then, good, my liege, to think my 
poverty is treacherous. Dear Sovereign, hear me speak. Aye, Celia, we state her for your sake, else had she with her father ranged along. I did not then entreat to have her stay. It was your pleasure and your own remorse. I was too young that time to value her, but now I know her. If she be a traitor, why, so am I. <laughs> We still have slept together, rose at an instant, learned, played, eat together, and wheresoever we went, like Juno swans, still we went coupled and inseparable. She is too subtle for thee, and her smoothness, her very silence, and her patience. Speak to the people, and they pity her. Thou art a fool. She robs thee of thy name. And that will show more bright and seem more virtuous when she is gone. Open not thy lips. Firm and irrevocable is my doom, which I have passed upon her. She is banished. Pronounce that sentence then on me, my liege. I cannot live out of her company. You are a fool. You, niece, provide yourself. If you outstay the time, upon mine honor and the greatness of my word, you die. <laughs> oh, my poor Rosalind! Whither wilt thou go? <laughs> wilt thou change fathers? I will give thee mine. I charge thee. Be not thou more grieved than I am. But I have more cause. Thou no, hast not, cousin. I may be cheerful. Knowst thou not the Duke hath banished me, his daughter? That he hath not. No. Hath not. Rosalind lacks then the love which teacheth thee that thou and I am one. Shall we be sundered? Shall we part, sweet girl? No. Let my father seek another heir. Therefore devise with me how we may fly, whither to go and what to bear with us. And do not seek to take your change upon you, to bear your griefs yourself and leave me out. For by this heaven, now at our sorrows, pal, say what thou canst. I'll go along with thee. Where, whither shall we go? to seek mine uncle in the forest of Arden. Alas, what danger will that be? Maids that we are to travel forth so far? Beauty provoking thieves sooner than gold. I'll put myself in poor and mean attire, and with a kind of umber smirch my face. The like do you. So shall we pass along and never stir assailants. Words not better, because I am more than common tall that I did suit me all points of a man. What shall I call thee when thou art a man? I'll have no worse a name than Jove's own page. Therefore, look, you call me Ganymede. <laughs> but what will you be called? Something that hath a reference to my state. No longer Celia, but Aliena. <laughs> but, cousin, should we essay to steal that clownish fool out of your father's court, would he not bring comfort to our travel? He'll go along o'er the wide world with me. Leave me alone to woo him. Let's away and get our jewels and our wealth together. Devise the fittest time and the safest way to hide us from pursuit that will be made after my flight. Now go and we content in liberty and not to banishment. <laughs> Can it be possible that no man saw that? It cannot be. Some villains of my court are of consent and sufferance in this. <laughs> I cannot hear of any that did see her. The ladies, her attendants of her chamber, saw her bed, and in the morning early found her bed untreasured of their mistress. My lord, the ruinish clown at whom your grace were so oft to laugh is also missing. Send to his brother. Fetch that gallant hither. If he be absent, bring his brother to me. I'll make him find him. Do this suddenly, and might not search in inquisition, quail to bring again these foolish runaways. Into the woods without regret, the choice is made, the task is set. 
In this kind of life, I will your very faithful feeder, feeder be, and buy with your gold right suddenly. Native burghers of this desert city should in their own confines with forked heads 
have their ground roaches gold. Indeed, my lord. The melancholy Jaques grieves at this, and in this kind swears you do more usurp than doth your brother that hath banished you. But what said Jaques? Did you leave him in this contemplation? We did, my lord, weeping and commenting upon the sobbing deer. <laughs> Show me the place. I like to cope him in these sullen fits, for then he's full of matter. Under the greenwood tree, who loves to lie with me and tune his merry note, his merry, merry note unto the sweet bird's throat and tune his merry note unto the sweet bird's throat. Come hither. Come hither, come hither, come hither, come hither, come hither, come hither. <laughs> more, my pretty more. I will make you melancholy, Monsieur Jacques. I thank it. More, I pretty more. I can suck melancholy out of a song as a weasel sucks eggs. More, I pretty more. Uh, my voice is ragged, I know I cannot please you. I do not desire you to please me, I do desire you to sing. Come, more, another stanzo, call you um stanzo. What you will, Monsieur Jaqui. Nay, I care not for their names, they owe me nothing. Will you sing? More at your request than to please myself. Well, if ever I thank any man, I'll thank you. Come, sing. And you that will not hold your tongues. We will end the song. The Duke shall drink under this tree. He hath been all this day to look you. And I have been all this day to avoid him. He is too dispute, disputable for my company. I think of as many matters as he, but I give heaven thanks and make no boast of them. Come. Warble, come. Under the greenwood tree. Who loves to lie with me and tune his merry note, his merry, merry note unto the sweet bird's note, and tune his merry note unto the sweet bird's note. Come hither, hither, come hither, come hither, come hither. I'll go sleep, if I can. If I cannot, I'll rail against all the firstborn of Egypt. Thou seest we are not all alone unhappy. This wide and universal theater presents more woeful pageants than the scene wherein we play in. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts, his act being seven ages, at first the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms, and then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school, and then a lover, sighing like furnace with a woeful ballad made to his mistress' eyebrow, and then a soldier, full of strange oaths and bearded like the pard, jealous in honor, sudden and quick in quarrel, seeking the bubble reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then a justice, and fair round belly with good cape on line, with eye severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise saws and modern instances, and so he plays his part. The six age shifts into the lean, and slipper pantaloon. Spectacle on nose with pouch on side, his youthful hose well safe. A world too wide for his shrunk shank. And his big manly voice turning again towards childish treble. Pipes and whistles in his sound. Last scene of all that ends this strange, eventful history is second childishness and mere oblivion. Son's teeth, 
son's eyes, son's taste, son's everything. If that you were the good Sir Roland's son, as you have whispered faithfully that you are, and as mine eyes doth his effigies witness, most truly limbed and living in your face, be truly welcome hither. I am the duke that loved your father, the residue of your fortune. Go to my cave and tell me. Give me your hand, and let me all your fortunes understand. Not see him since. Oh, that your highness knew my heart in this. I never loved my brother in my life. More villain thou. Well, push him out of doors, and let my officers of such a nature make an extent upon his house and lands. Do this expediently and turn him going. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. There's a bright golden haze on the meadow. The corn is as high as an elephant's eye. And it looks like it's climbing clear up to the sky. Oh, what a beautiful morning. Oh, what a beautiful day. I've got a beautiful feeling. Everything's going my way. Oh, what a beautiful day. Hang there, my verse, in witness of my love. And thou, thrice crowned queen of night, survey with thy chaste eye from thy pale sphere above, thy huntress's name that my full life doth sway. Oh, Rosalind, these trees shall be my books, and in their barks my thoughts I'll character that every eye which in this forest looks shall see thy virtue witness everywhere. Run, run, Orlando, carve on every tree the fair, the chaste, and unexpressive she. How do you like this shepherd's life, Master Touchstone? <laughs> Truly, shepherd, in respect of itself, it is a good life. But hmm. in respect that it is a shepherd's life, it is not. Wast thou ever in court, Shepherd? No, truly. Then thou art damned. Nay, I hope. Truly, thou art damned, like an ill-roasted egg all on one side. <laughs> For not being at court, your reason. Why, if thou never wast at court, thou never sawst good manners. <laughs> if thou never sawst good manners, then thy manners must be wicked. And wickedness is sin, and sin is damnation. Thou art in a parlous state, Shepherd. Not a wit, Touchstone. Mend the instance, Shepherd. You have too courtly a wit for me. I'll rest. Oh, wilt thou rest damned? God help thee, shallow man. God make incision in me. Thou art raw. I am a true laborer. I earn that I eat, get that I wear, owe no man's hate, envy of no man's good, glad of other men's happiness, content with my harm, and the greatest of my pride is to see my ewes graze and my lambs suck. Ah, here comes young Master Ganymede, my new mistress brother. From the east to western end, no jewel is like Rosalind. Her worth being mounted on the wind, through all the world bears Rosalind. All the pictures fairest lined are but black to Rosaline. <laughs> Let no face be kept in mind, but the fair of Rosaline. I'll rhyme you so eight years together, dinners and suppers and sleeping hours excepted. It is the right butter women's rank to market. Out, fool. Poor taste. If a heart do lack a hind, let him seek out Rosaline. If the cats will after kind, so be sure will Rosaline. A winter garments must be lined, so must slender Rosaline. They that reap must sheep and bind, then to cart with Rosaline. Sweetest nut have sour as rind, such a nut is Rosaline. He that sweetest rose will find, must find love's and Rosaline. And this is the very 
false gallop of verses. Why do you infect yourself with them? Peace, you dull fool. I found them on a tree. Yeah, truly the tree yields bad fruit. I shall graft it with you, and then I'll graft it with the meddler. Then it'll be the earliest fruit in the country, for you'll be rotten ere you'll be half ripe. And that's the right virtue of a meddler. Yeah, you have said, but whether wisely or no, let the forest judge. Peace, here comes my sister. Read it. Stand aside. Why should this a desert be? For it is unpeopled? No. Tongues all hang on every tree that shall Sibyl's saying show. Some but upon the fairest boughs, or at every sentence end, will I grovel in the right, teaching all that read to know the quintessence of every sprite, heaven would in little show. Helen's cheek, but not her heart, Cleopatra's majesty, Atalanta's better part, sad Lucretia's modesty. Thus Rosalind of many parts by heavenly synod was devised, of many faces, eyes, and hearts to have the touches dearest prized. Heaven would that she these gifts should have, and I to live and die her slave. Oh, most gentle Jupiter! What tedious homily of love have you wearied your parishioners with all, and never cried, have patience, good people? How now? Back, friends. Shepherd, go off a little. Go with him, Sirrah. Come, Shepherd, let us make an honorable retreat, though not with bag and baggage, yet with strip and strippage. <laughs> Didst thou hear these verses? Yes, and more, too. For some of the verses had in them more feet than the verses were there. But didst thou hear without wondering how thy name should be hanged and carved upon these trees? Is it a man? It is young Orlando that tripped up the wrestler's heels and your heart both in an instant. Orlando? Orlando? Alas, the day! What shall I do with my doublet and host? What did he when thou sawst him? What said he? How looked he? Where and went he? What makes he here? How parted he with thee? Did he ask for me? Where remains he? Answer me in one word. I would sing my song without a burden, and thou bringest me out of tune. Don't you know I am a woman? When I think, I must speak. Speak, say on. You bring me out. Thought. Comes he not here? Tis he. Sleep by a note. I thank you for your company, but, good faith, I had as lief have been myself alone. And so had I, but yet for fashion's sake. I thank you too for your society. God by you. Let's meet as little as we can. I do desire we may be better strangers. I pray you, Mar, no more trees with writing love songs in their barks. I pray you, Mar, no, of my, mo, no more of my verses with reading them ill favored. Rosalind, is your love name? Yes, just. By my troth, I was seeking for a fool when I found you. He is drowned in the brook. Look but in, and you shall see him. There I shall see my own figure. Which I take to be either a fool or a cipher. <laughs> I'll tarry no longer with you. Farewell, good singer love. I am glad of your departure. Adieu, good monster. Oh. I will speak to him like a saucy lackey, and under the habit play the name. Do you hear, Forrester? Very well. What would you? I pray you. What is the clock? You should ask me what time o' day. There is no clock in the forest. Then there is no true lover in the forest. Else sighing every minute and groaning every hour would detect the lazy foot of time as well as a clock. Where dwell you, pretty youth? With this shepherdess, my sister, here on the skirts of the forest like fringe upon a petticoat. Are you native of this place? As the coney where you see dwell where she is kindled. Your accent is something finer than you could purchase in so removed a dwelling. Indeed, an old religious uncle of mine taught me to speak, who was, in his youth, an inland man, one that knew courtship too well, for there he fell in love. There is a man, haunts the forest, that abuses our young plants by carving the name Rosalind on their branches, hangs odes upon hawthorns and elegies on brambles, all forsooth deifying the name of Rosalind. If I could meet this fan fancy monger, I would give him some good counsel, for he seems to have the quotidian of love upon him. <laughs> I am he that is so love-shaped. I pray you, tell me your remedy. I see none of my uncle's marks upon you. 
He taught me to know a man in love, in which cage of brushes I'm sure you're not prisoner. What were his marks? A lean cheek, which you have not. A blue eye and sunken, which you have not. An unquestionable spirit, which you have not. A beard neglected, which you have not. But I pardon you for that, as you were no such man. You were rather a point device in your accoutrements of loving yourself than seeming the lover of any other. Fair youth, I would I could make thee believe I love. <laughs> make me believe it. You should make her that you love believe it. But are you the he that hangs the verses on the trees in which Rosalind is so admired? I swear to thee, youth, by the white hand of Rosalind, I am that he. That unfortunate he. But are you so much in love as your rhymes speak? Neither rhyme nor reason can express how much. Love is merely a madness. And I can tell you deserve a dark house and a whip as madmen do. But the reason why they are not so cured and punished is because the lunacy is so ordinary that the whippers are in love too. Yet I profess curing it by counsel did you ever cure any so? Yes. One. And in this manner. He was to imagine me his love, his mistress, and I set him every day to come woo me. For at the time I, being but a moonish youth, grief, be effeminate, changeable, longing, liking, proud, fantastical, <coughs> apish, shallow, inconstant, full of tears, of smiles, would now like him, now loathe him, then entertain him, then forswear him, then wait for him, then spit at him, as I drave his mad humor of love into a living humor of madness, and thus I cure him. In which way will I take upon me to wash your liver as clean as a sound, sound sheep's heart, that there will not be one spot of love in it? <laughs> I would not be cured, you. I would cure you if you would but call me Rosalind and come to my coat every day to woo me. Now, by the faith of my love, I will. Tell me where it is. Come with me and I'll show it to you. Will you go? With all my heart, good you. Nay, you must call me Rosalind. Come, sister, will you go?
proceed, proceed. I'll give her. Good evening, good master, what you call it. How do you, sir? You are very well met. God yield you for your last company. I am very glad to see you. Even a toy in hand, sir. A nice pretty cover. Will you be married, Motley? As the ox hath his bow, sir, the horse his curb, and the falcon her bells, so man hath his desires. And as pigeons bill, so wedlock would be nibbling. And will you, being a man of your breeding, be married under a bush like a beggar? Get you to a church and have a good priest that can tell you what marriage is. This fellow will but join you together as they join Wayne Scott. Then one of you will prove a shrunk panel and, like green timber, warp, warp. I am not in the mind, but I were better to be married of him than of another, for he is not like to marry me well, and not being well married, it would be a better excuse hereafter for me to leave my wife. Go thou with me and let me counsel thee. Come, sweet Audrey, we must be married or we must live in Baudry. <laughs> Do not talk to me, I will weep. Do, I prithee, but yet have the grace to consider that tears do not become a man. Have I not cause to weep? As good cause as one would desire, therefore weep. But why did he swear he would come this morning, and comes not? Nay, certainly there is no truth in him. Do you think so? Yes. I do not think he is a pig purse nor a horse dealer, but for his verity in love, I do think him as concave as a covered goblet or a warm eaten nut. Not true in love. Yes, when he is in. But I think he is not in. But you've heard him swear downright he was. Oh, was is not is. Besides, the oath of a lover is no stronger than the word of a tapster. Both are the converter of false reckonings. He attends here, in the forest. Ah, the Duke. Your father. I met with the Duke yesterday and had much question with him. He asked me of what parentage I was, and I told him of as good as he. So he laughed and let me go. But what talk we of fathers when there is such a man as Orlando? Oh, that's a brave man. <laughs> he writes brave verses, speaks brave words, swears brave oaths. It breaks them! <laughs> Who comes here? Mistress and master, you oft inquired after the shepherd that did complain of love, who you saw sitting by me on the turf, praising the proud, disdainful shepherdess who was his mistress. Well, and what of him? If you will see a pageant truly played beyond the pale complexion of true love and the red glow of scorn and proud disdain, go hence a little, and I shall conduct you, if you will mark it. Oh, come! Let us remove. The sight of love feedeth those in love. Bring us to the sight, and you shall say, I'll prove a busy actor in their play. Sweet baby, do not scorn me, do not! Baby! Say that you love me not, but say not so in bitterness. Become an executioner, whose heart the custom sight of death makes hard, falls not the axe upon the humbled neck, but first begs pardon. Will you sterner be than he that dies and lives by bloody drops? I would not be thy executioner. I fly thee, for I would not injure thee. Thou tellest me there is murder in my eyes. Tis pretty, sure, and very probable that eyes that are the frailest and softest things who shut their coward gates on atomies should be called tyrants. Butchers, murderers. Now I do frown on you with all my heart, and if mine eyes can wound, now let them kill me. Now counterfeit to swoon, now fall them down. Or if thou canst, oh, for shame, for shame, thou say that mine eyes are murderers. Oh, dear Phoebe, if ever, as that ever may be near, be me in some fresh cheek the power of fancy, then you shall know the wound. Invisible love's keen arrows make. But till that time, come not down near me. And when that time comes, afflict me with thy mocks, pity me not. And till that time, I will not pity you. And why, I pray you, who might be your mother that you insult, exult in all at once? Over the wretched, why though you have no beauty, must you be therefore proud and pitiless? What makes you? Why do you look upon me? I see no more in you than in the ordinary of 
nature's sales work. Odds my little life she means to tangle my eyes too. No, faith, proud mistress, and hope not after it. Sell what you can. You're not for all markets. Pride the man mercy, love him, take his offer. Foul is most foul for being foul to be a scoffer. So take her to thee, shepherd. Very well, sweet youth, I pray you chide a year together. I'd rather hear you chide than this man woo. He's fallen in love with your foulness, and she's fallen in love with my anger. I'll answer her with bitter words as fast as she answers thee with bitter frowns. Why look you so upon me? For no ill will I bear you. I pray you do not fall in love with me, for I am fouler than vows made into wine. Besides, I like you not. Come, sister, will you go? Dead shepherd, now I find thy saw of might. Whoever loves that loved not at first sight, <coughs> sweet Phoebe. <laughs> what sayest thou, Sylvia? Sweet Phoebe, pity me while I am sorry for you, gentle Sylvia. Wherever sorrow is, relief would be. If you do sorrow at my grief and love, by giving love your sorrow is my grief were both excellent. Thou hast my love, is that not neighborly? I would have you that thou were covetousness. Sylvia, the time was that I hated thee, and yet it is not that I bear thee love, but since thou canst talk of love so well, thy company, which erst was so irksome to me, I will endure, and I'll employ thee too. But do not look for further recompense than thine own gladness that thou art employed. So holy and so perfect is my love, and I in such a poverty of grace shall think it a most plenteous crop to glean the broken ears after the man that the main harvest reaps, loose now and then a scattered smile that I'll live upon. Knowest thou the youth that spoke to me erewhile? Not very well, but I've met him oft, and he hath bought the cottage and the bounds that the old carlet once was master of. Think not I love him, though I ask of him. Tis but a peevish boy, yet he talks well. But what care I for words? Yet words do well when he that speaks them pleases those that hear. It is a pretty youth, though not very pit pretty. He is not very tall, but for his years he is tall. His leg is but so-so, yet tis well. And yet I am now remembered, scorned at me. I marvel why I answered and not again. But that is all one. Omittance is no quittance. I'll write to him a very taunting letter, and thou shalt bear it. Wilt thou, Sylvia, see thee with all my heart? I'll write it straight. The matter is in my heart and in my head. I will be bitter with him and passing short. Go with me, Sylvia. Good day and happiness, dear Rosalind. Why, how now, Orlando? Where have you been all this while? You, a lover, and you feed me such another trick? Come no more in my sight. My fair Rosalind, I come within an hour of my promise. Break an hour's promise in love. Pardon me, dear Rosalind. Nay, and you be so tardy for it. Come no more in my sight. I had as leaf be wooed of a snail. Of a snail. I <laughs> of a snail. For though he comes slowly, he brings his house on his head, a better jointure, I think, than you make a woman. Besides, he brings his destiny with him. What's that? Why, horns which such as you are fain to be beholding to your wives for, for but he comes armed in his fortunes and prevents the slander of his wife. Virtue is no horn maker, and my Rosalind is virtuous. And I am your Rosalind. It pleases him to call you so, but he hath the Rosalind of a better clear than you. Come, woo me, woo me, for now I am in a holiday humor and like enough to consent. What would you say to me now if I were your very, very Rosalind? I would kiss before I spoke. Nay, you better speak first, and when you are graveled for lack of matter, then you might take occasion to kiss. The cleanliest shift is to kiss. How if the kiss be denied? Then she puts you in entreaty, and there begins new matter. Who could be out being before his beloved mistress? Mary, if should you. If I was your mistress, I would think my honesty ranker than my wit. What? Of my suit? Not out of your apparel, and yet out of your suit. Am not I your Rosalind? 
I take some joy to say you are, because I would be talking of her. Well, as her person, I will not have you. Then, in mine own person, I die. No, Faith, die by attorney. Men have died from time to time, and worms have eaten them, but not for love. I would not have my right Rosalind of this mind, for I protest her frown might kill me. By this hand it will not kill a fly. But come, now I will be your Rosalind in a more coming on disposition. Ask me what you will, and I will grant it. Then love me, Rosalind. Aye, I will, Fridays and Saturdays and all. <laughs> and wilt thou have me? I and twenty such. What sayest thou? Are you not good? I hope so. Then why can one desire too much of a good thing? Come, sister, you shall be the priest to marry us. Give me your hands, Orlando. What do you say, sister? Uh, uh, pray thee, marry us. Uh, I cannot say the words. Well, you must begin with, will you, Orlando? Go to. Will you, Orlando, have to wife this Rosalind? I will. Aye, but when? Why now? As fast as she can marry us. Then you must say, I take thee, Rosalind, for wife. I take thee, Rosalind, for wife. I would ask you for your commission, but I do take thee, Orlando, for my husband. There's a girl goes before the priest, and certainly a woman's thoughts run before her actions. So do all thoughts. They are winged. How long will you have her after you've possessed her? Forever and a day. But wilt my Rosalind do so? By my life she will do as I do. For these two hours, Rosalind, I will leave thee. Alas, my love, I cannot lack thee two hours. I must attend the Duke at dinner. By two o'clock I will be with thee again. Aye, go your ways, go your ways. I knew what you would prove. My friends told me as much, and I thought no less. That flattering tongue of yours has won me. Tis but one cast away, and so come death. Two o'clock is your hour. Aye, sweet Rosalind. By my troth, and in good earnest, and so God mend me, and by all pretty oaths that are not dangerous. If you break your promise by one jot, or come one minute behind your hour, I will think thee the most pathetical break promised, and most unhollow lover, and most unworthy of her that you call Rosalind. Therefore beware, my censure, and keep your promise. With no less religion than if thou wert indeed, my Rosalind. So adieu. Adieu. You have simply misused our sex in your love crate. We must have your doublet and hose plucked over your head and show the world what the bird hath done to her own nest. Oh, cause, 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 my pretty little cause, that thou didst know how many fathom deep I am in love. But my affection hath unknown bottom, like the Bay of Portugal. Or rather, bottomless, that as fast as you pour affection in, it runs out. I'll tell the Aliena, I cannot be out of the sight of Orlando. I'll go find a shadow in sight till he come. And I'll sleep. Look who comes. My errand is to you, fair youth. I know not the contents, but as I guess by the stern brow and waspish action, as she did use as she was writing of it, it bears an angry tenor. Pardon me, I am but a guiltless messenger. Patience herself would startle at this letter and play the swagger. Bear this, bear all. She babies me. Mark how the tyrant writes. Art thou God to shepherd turn, that a maiden's heart hath burned? Can a woman rail thus? Are you this railing? Why thy God had laid apart? Warest thou with a woman's heart? Did you ever hear such rail? Whilst the eye of man did woo me, that could do no vengeance to me, meaning me a beast. If the scorn of your right eye have power to raise such love in mine, a laugh in me what strange effect would they work in mild aspect. Whilst you chid me I did love, how's then might your prayers move? He that brings this love to me little knows this love in me. Call you this chiding? Alas, poor shepherd. Do you pity him? No, he deserves no pity. Wilt thou love such a woman? What, to make an instrument and play false strains upon me? Not to be endured? Well, then go to her, then. For I see this love hath made thee a tame snake and say this to her. That if she love me, I charge her to love thee. And if she will not, I will not have her unless thou entreat to her. If you be a true lover, Hence and not a word, for here comes more company. Good morrow. 
fair ones. Pray you, if you know, where in the purlieus of this forest stands a sheep coat, fenced about with olive trees. West of this place, down in the near Nevada, the range of Osier is by the murmuring stream. Left on your right hand brings you to the place. But at this hour, the house doth keep itself. There's none within. If an eye may profit by a tongue, then should I know you by description? Such garments and such years. The boy is fair, a female favor, and bestows himself like a ripe sister. The woman is low and browner than her brother. Are not you the owners of the house I did inquire for? It is no close being asked to say we are. Orlando doth commend him to you both. And to that youth who calls his Rosalind, he sends his bloody napkin. Are you he? I am. What must we understand by this? Some of my shame. You will know of me what man I am, and how, why, and where this handkerchief was stained. I pray you tell it. When last the young Orlando parted from you, you have to promise to return again with me now. Pacing through the forest, blow up the fell. He threw his eye aside and marked the object of his entrance. Under an old oak, whose boughs were mossed with age, a wretched, ragged man, overgrown with hair, was sleeping on his back. About his neck, a green and gilded snake had wreathed itself, who, with her head nimble and threats, did approach the opening of his mouth. But suddenly, seeing Orlando, it did unlink itself, and it slipped away with indented glides into a bush. Under which bush is shade? A lioness. With udders all drawn dry, lay couching, head on the ground, with cat like watch when that the sleeping man should stir, for tis the royal disposition of that beast. This scene, Orlando did approach the man and found it was his brother, his elder brother. Oh, I have heard him speak of that same brother, and he did render him the most unnatural that lived amongst men. And well he might so do, for well I know he was unnatural. But to Orlando, did he leave him there food to be sucked into the hungry lioness? Twice did he turn his back and purpose so. But kindness, nobler ever than revenge. And nature, stronger than this just occasion, made him give battle to the lioness, who quickly fell before him, and which Hurtling from miserable slumber, I awaked. Are you his brother? Wast you he rescued? Wast you that did so oft contrive to kill him? <coughs> was I, but tis not I. I do not shame to tell you what I was, since my conversion tastes so sweetly, being the thing I am. But for the bloody napkin. By and by. When from first to last betwixt us two, tears our recountment had most kindly bathed as how I came into that desert place. In brief, he led me unto the gentle duke, committing me unto my brother's love, who led me instantly unto his cave. There stripped himself, and here, upon his arm, the lioness had torn some flesh away, which all this while had bled, and now he fainted, and cried in fainting upon Rosalind. Brief, I recovered him, bound up his wound, and after some small space, being strong at heart, he sent me hither, stranger that I am, to tell this story, and to give this napkin, dyed in this blood, unto that shepherd youth he in sport doth call his Rosalind. Why <laughs> call <laughs> Ganymede? Sweet Ganymede! Many will swoon when they do look on blood. There is more in it. Cousin Ganymede! Look, you covers. Oh. I would I were at home. We'll lead you thither. I pray you, will you take him by the arm? Be of good cheer, you, you a man. You lack a man's heart. I do confess it. But ah, oh, Syrah, a body would think this was well counterfeit. I pray you tell your brother how well I counterfeited. I hope. This was not counterfeit. There's too great complexion in your testimony that it was a passion of earnest. Counterfeited, I assure you. Well then, take a good heart and counterfeit to be a man.
be a most vile martext. But, Audrey, there is a youth here in the forest lays claim to you. I, I know who tis. He hath got an interest in me in the world. Here comes the man you mean. It is meat and drink to me to see a clown. By my troth, we that have good wits have much to answer for. We shall be flouting, we cannot hold. Good even, Audrey. God, you good even, William. Good even to you, sir. No, good even, gentle friend. Cover thy head, cover thy head. Nay, pretty, be covered. How old are you? Fred, five and twenty, sir. A ripe age. Is thy name William? William, sir. A fair name. Was born in the forest here? Ah, sir. I thank God. Thank God. A good answer. Art rich? Faith, sir. So so. <laughs> so so is good. Very good. Very excellent good. <laughs> Yet it is not. It is but so so. Art thou wise? I I have a pretty wit. Why thou sayest well. I do now remember a saying, the fool doth think he is wise, but the wise man knows himself to be a fool. You do love this maid? I do, sir. Give me your hand. Art thou learned? No, sir. Then learn this of me. To have is to have. For it is a figure in rhetoric that to drink, being poured out of a cup into a glass. By filling the one, doth empty the other. For your writings do consent that ipse is he. Now you are not ipse, for I am me. Which, which he, sir? He? Sir, that must marry this woman. Therefore, you clown, abandon. Which in the vulgar is leave. The society, which in the boorish is company of this female, which in the common is woman, which together is abandon the society of this female or clown, thou perishest. Or to thy better understanding, diest. Or to wit, I kill thee. Make thee away, translate thy life into death, thy liberty into bondage. I will deal poison in thee, or in bastinado, or in seal. I will bandy with thee in faction, or run thee with policy, I will kill thee. A hundred and fifty ways, so therefore tremble and depart. Do, good William. God rest you merry, sir. Our master and mistress seeks you. Come away. Away. Trip Audrey, trip Audrey. I am dead, I am dead. It is possible that on so little acquaintance you should like her, that but seeing you should love her, and loving woo, and wooing she should grant, and will you persever to enjoy her? Neither call the giddiness of it in question, the poverty of her, the small acquaintance, my sudden wooing, nor her sudden consenting. But say with me, I love Aliena. Say with her that she love me. Consent with us both that we may enjoy each other. It should be to your good, for my father's house, and all the revenue of old Sir Roland's will. I will estate upon you, and here live and die a shepherd. <laughs> you have my consent. Let your wedding be tomorrow. Thither will I invite the Duke and all his contented followers. Go you and prepare Aliena, for look you, here comes my rivalry. God save you, brother. And you, fair sister. Oh, my dear Orlando, how it grieves me to see thee wear thy heart in a scarf. It is my arm. Oh. I thought thy heart had been wounded with the claws of a lion. Wounded it is, but with the eyes of a lady. I will no longer idle you with talking. Believe me, if you please, that I can do strange things. I have, since I was three years old, been conversed of a magician, most profound and yet not damnable. If you do love Rosalind, so near to the heart as your gestures cry out, when your brother marries Aliena, shall you marry her? I know into what straits of fortune she is driven, and it seems not impossible to me, if it appear not inconvenient to you, that you shall marry her tomorrow, human as she is and without any danger. <laughs> Speaks thou in sober meaning. By my life I do. Though I say I am a magician, therefore put you in your best array, bid your friends, for tomorrow you will be married, and to Rosalind if you shall. But here comes a lover of mine and a lover of hers. You you have done me much ungentleness to show the letter I have written you. It is my study to appear most ungentle and 
sounds faithful to you. You are followed by a faithful shepherd. Love him. Look upon him. He worships you. Gentle set shepherd, tell this youth what tis to love. It is to be all made of sighs and tears. And so am I for Phoebe. And I for Ganymede. And I for Rosalind. And I for no woman. <laughs> it is to be all made of faith and service. And so am I for Phoebe. And I for Ganymede. And I for Rosalind. And I for no woman. It is to be all made of fantasy, all made of passion, and all made of wishes, all adoration, duty, and observance, all humbleness, all patience, and impatience, all purity, all trial, all observance. And so am I for Phoebe. And I for Ganymede. And so am I for Rosalind. And so am I for no woman. If this be so, why blame you me to love you? If this be so, why blame you me to love you? If this be so, why blame you me to love you? Who do you speak to? Why blame me you to love me? To her that is not here, nor doth not hear. I pray you, no more of this. Tis like the howling of Irish wolves against the moon. <laughs> I will help you if I can. I would love you if I could. Tomorrow, meet me all together. I will marry you if ever I marry woman, and you shall be married tomorrow. I will satisfy you if ever I satisfy man, and you shall be married tomorrow. I will content you if ever you please be content, and you shall be married tomorrow. As you love Rosalind, meet. As you love Phoebe, meet. And as I love no woman, I'll meet. Very well, I've left you. I'll not fail if I live, nor I. Nor I. Sometimes do not, at those that fear they hope and know they fear. Patience once more, whilst our compact is urged. You say when I bring your Rosalind, you will bestow her on Orlando here. That would I, had I kingdoms to give with her. And you say you will have her when I bring her. That would I, were I of all kingdoms king. And you say you will have Phoebe, if you will. Though to have her in death were both one thing. Then I promise to make all this matter even. You, O oh Duke, to keep your word, to give your daughter. You, Orlando, to receive your daughter. And from hence, I go to make all these doubts even. I do remember in the shepherd boy some lively touches of my daughter's favor. My lord, the first time that I ever saw him, he thought he was a brother to your daughter. But, my good lord, this boy is forest born and hath been tutored in the rudiments of the forest, of many great studies made by his uncle, who he reports to be a great magician, obscured in the circle of this forest. There is, sure, another flood toward, and these couples are coming to the yard. Here comes a pair of very strange beasts, which, in all tongues, are called fools. Greetings and salutations to you all. Good, my lord, bid him welcome. This is the motley-minded gentleman that I have so often met in the forest. He hath been a courtier, he swears. If any man doubt that, let him put me to my purgation. I have trod a measure. I have flattered a lady. I have been politic with my friend, smooth with mine enemy. I have undone three tailors. I have had four quarrels and like to have fought one. Is not this a rare fellow, my lord? He's as good at anything and yet a fool. He uses his folly like a stalking horse, and under the presentation of that, he shoots his wit. <laughs> that there is mirth in heaven when earthly things made even atone together. Good Duke, receive thy daughter. 
Simon from heaven brought her, yea, brought her hither, <laughs> that thou mightest join her hand with his, whose heart within his bosom is. For you I give myself, for I am yours. For you I give myself, for I am yours. If there be truth in sight, you are my daughter. If there be truth in sight, you are my Rosalind. I will have no father if you be not he. I will have no husband if you be not he. Peace, ho! I bar confusion. Tis I must make conclusion of these most strange events. Here's eight that must join hands and join in Hymen's bands, if truth holds true contents. You and you, no cross shall part. You and you are heart in heart. You and you are sure together as the winter to foul weather. Whiles a wedlock hymn we sing, feed ourselves with questioning that reason wonder may diminish how thus we met and these things finish. Wedding is great Juno's crown, O oh, blessed bond of board and bed. Tis Hymen peoples every town. High wedlock then be honored. Honor, high honor and renown to Hymen, goddess of every town. Oh, my dear niece, welcome thou art to me, even daughter, welcome, in no less degree. Out of these convertites, there is much matter to be heard and learned. You, to your former honor, I bequeath, your patience and virtues well deserve it. You, to a love that your true faith doth merit. You, to your love and land and great allies. You, to a long and well deserved bed. And you to arrange for thy loving voyage is but for two months victual. So, to your pleasures, I am other than for dancing measures. Stay, Jake, we stay. To see no pastime, I, but you would have, I'll stay to know at your abandoned cave. Proceed, proceed. We'll begin these rites as we do trust they'll end in true delight. It was a lover and his lass with a hay and a ho and a hay, naughty no, and a hay, naughty naughty no, with a hay and a ho and a. 